Uh, yeah, only only means for easy pickings for Coolsy at this point, which is you get you get him get him on the front foot early. He's gonna always going to be a very difficult person to catch. I don't think you want to widen up that target somehow, but definitely behind's always a good place to be when uh, you know that uh, Josh probably doesn't fancy himself early in the game drawing in there. Not if he comes through with about fifty three miles of weight. Well, I think I think they felt that ball and two wells he threw it that 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 far down so fast. Yeah, he's going again. He's let it go, and he's uh, he, yep. uh, probably worse than the first. He's leaving himself room for improvement, I think, uh, Stuart. <laughs> it's okay. It's a game of improvement. It's a going the wrong way about it early, but uh, <laughs> as you said, there's definitely a lot to work with. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was watching the warm-up, and Josh was parking them within inches. On, you know, you're holding, you're down two, you've got to hit that. Right on. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I mean, that forward bowl of Jeff Davis is probably blocking the vision he needs. Is he's got to hit it sweet. In yeah. The line that it's probably I th better off putting something around close. I just thought. Yeah. If you, if you are going to go that fast, it's not the kind of head that, in my mind, you've got to go flat out with. You can play curving sort of weight yep. and just push them through and stay. Yep. And at least that way, if you don't get the shot, you're not going to be uh, too down either. Uh, it might have fattened up that toe. It's a little bit, but you know, it's about three and a half feet short. Don't think it's going to do much damage. No, nah, and and Josh uh, chooses to draw his way out of trouble this time. I think he's probably hurt us in the commentary. Yeah. <laughs> we were rather vocal about it early. Uh, they might have hurt us on rink seven. Pl yeah, played it quick and missed. So two to the, the night. Nights. To the knights. Interesting night tonight. Uh, should we're going to be joined by Mark Casey? Yeah, a man that I will. Uh, Personally, say a bit of a hero of mine. I, I consider him probably the best left-handed bowler of all time, and being a fellow lefty, that's always something that I aspire to be. The Mark Casey's equal. Don't think it ever eventuated, but uh, still, would be great to have someone of his caliber and experience in the booth with us tonight. Uh, and uh, now, as a Jackson Orden leading us off, uh, we'll go to a few comments. There's a few hellos. Uh, hello to Adrian Menzel and Sharon Kane. Nathan Black says a particular hello to you as well, TJ. Oh, thank you, Nathan. Always yeah. good to uh, hear from young Nathan. Of course, played that incredibly uh, solid game against uh, Scotty and uh, James Gregory last Sunday. Tell you what, that, would have, that was a fantastic game to watch, even for the short period of time that I could. Uh, good, good evening to Damien Warner, who's tuning in. Uh, Darren Warner's playing the single, no, oh, sorry, the triples tonight. No, sorry, it is the singles. It is the singles on the rink right next to the uh, the stream game. You probably catch a bit of that uh, on your vision. Yeah, so it won't be on our coverage, but we'll be sure to do a few scoreboard checks throughout and uh, keep people as posted as humanly possible. And of course, uh, Bushy's still in the NT. So will he ever come home? I think it's the big question now. He's been oh, he's bit, he, been away for a while. He's probably incentivised. He's not going to be too happy with the weather, <laughs> I can assure you that. <laughs> it's going to be better than what we've got in South Australia, that's for sure. Oh. It uh, yeah. started out lovely. Well, it did. It's cracking day today. Yeah. It was almost too good to be at work, and now this is the kind of weather you'd rather be at work at. Unless, of course, you dig trenches. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> Which, sing it, and a uh, shout out to all those people that are working outside at the moment. My uh, thoughts are definitely with you. Yeah, I definitely sympathise. Uh, would not like to be out there myself. And uh, Jack Trenord and sending one down. Currently staring the barrel one down, but you fully expect him to get out of trouble here. Just gets through the gap a little bit, but by no means in a disgraceful position. He's got three around the mark, and Coolsy's the kind of guy, you leave him three balls like that, he can work with it. Oh, absolutely. Probably suggest that Jeff needs to put one somewhere in the area right now, so that's pretty, pretty fragile sitting in there. Yeah, especially... Uh, going how a short one could be a bit hinderous in the future, uh, but plays two great shots here out of three. Just the, uh, Claire. Hey, Claire and the great John Munro checking in from uh, Ballina in New South Wales. Uh, there we go. Johnny Munro, the yeah. coach of Marion Bowling Club, so thanks yeah. for tuning in, the two of you. And, of course, Heather Richardson, uh, shout out to Mark. He'll be with us probably in about five or ten minutes. Um, just... Uh, and of course, he's here to uh, to promote the UBC. Yeah, fantastic new initiative. Uh, that I, I think I'm not sure if it's uh, a Bowls SA initiative or just a spearheaded it's by not, Mark in particular. Not, not, not Bowls SA. It's actually uh, spearheaded by Mark. But look, you know, at the end of the day, let's. I reckon we'll wait, leave a bit of suspense here, and see uh, what Mark's. 
comments are on it, but uh, yeah. sort of got a bit, bit of a brief on it. Uh, sounds very, uh, very interesting. Another evolution of the game. Of course, uh, sorry, just give it to uh, Kane parking in uh, shot bowl. Yeah, fantastic shot too. Uh, was was two down going into that. So fantastic uh, result for the Knights, and really forces Josh onto the back foot yet again. Which I, th I think that's a bit of a staple of Kane's. Just really putting one in there when you don't want it. Well, that's how quick the game turns. I mean, Kane's still got one, but second and third would to the uh, Mallee Pirates. Oh, I was fortunate to be a teammate of Kane's in this last season at Hold Fast Bay, and the amount of times you see him staring down the barrel, one or even multiple down, just make, he just always has a way of just getting his way out of it, or at least, you know, reducing it. I reckon uh, Adrian Menzel would be commentating with you 2pm next Sunday, because I reckon I'm out of here. I do believe so. So, yeah, looking forward to teaming up with Adrian for that one. And good evening to Toby Cook and Meester, or a.k.a. the Master Chef, as I believe that translation works out. <laughs> uh, so thanks for tuning in, Tobes. Hope you've had a great day. And uh, Pounds and ounces going past the uh, club at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the train's gone to go pick Toby up from ABC. <laughs> Just so he can uh, attend tonight. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that'll give him a lift back. And... Well, Josh plays with a bit of weight, knocks one out, but is it the one that he wanted? No, one there down. Multiple yellows makes it difficult at this range. Probably, I could say something missile on and say, well, we'll just say that the uh, closest yellow one's Canes. Canes yeah. It's usually a safe assumption. Uh, <laughs> for, no, the it's actually for the sake you know, Josh, I think they got up 36 in the pairs. And, uh, you know, from all intents and purposes I heard from his coach, his drives were on and I saw his draws that they were absolutely spot on. So well done to Josh. Oh, so he's, he's more than welcome to the criticism. Should there be any then, you would think? I'm, I'm thinking that he probably gives out a little bit. He yeah. can probably take a lot. I've For, for knowing for knowing him for, for a number of years, uh, whilst he's not, not aged a day in 10 years, uh, he's more than happy to give out a little bit of uh, yep. <laughs> smart talk. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll see if Josh is going to draw this one, mate. Yeah, there he, we go. He's given us the, the confidence. He's given us nod. the nod. That, that's, the the Luck, that's the Dulux job done nod, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's, yeah. he's chalked it up early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very deliberate. Yeah. Very, very smooth. Yeah, let it go very smooth. And following it up the green, he likes it. He's really not far away with this. He's played it well. That is an and absolute cracker. That is a great shot by Josh Thompson. For three. That is uh, well done. Well, hey, nice smile, mate. You, you asking, we, we asking you deliver, Josh. Well done. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Give, gives us a wry smile and a what did you expect kind of look to us. <laughs> Like I said, you know, he popped on the mat there early in the piece and uh, you know, Kane had parked in shot. Looked like it was in the favour of the Northern Knights and that's how quick the game can turn around. Exactly. Um, you know, and I, th I think a lot a lot of people only sort of uh, note Josh for his upshot, which is, you know, by all means, it'll break your foot if you try and put put it in front of it. But, uh, he's got, you know, he is the son of Gary, so he's naturally he's going to have a fantastic draw bowl on him. And Do you know, the interesting thing is that Josh told me, and we, we had him on the... Um, on the midweek show when we announced the teams and if you only told me off that look he actually has never beaten his dad in a game of singles I, I don't find it difficult to believe because Gary's such a great bowler that you can kind of go yeah even on your best day you'd have difficulty but um, at the same time Josh is a great bowler in his own right you'd think you'd get close once or twice and steal it but uh, I guess they've also bowled at different clubs for a few years so well, it's interesting here, Jeff Davis has gone, he has gone T to T, coast to coast. T to T and, well, nails it with his first, first. one. Uh, yeah. That's not going to disappoint too many skips. Of course, uh, Jack Trenorden, for those known, he's the uh, captain of the under-18 state side. Mm. Um, very good bowler in his own right at Westlakes, playing in, uh, I think, quite a few games of a, uh, the Prem 1 last season. Well, I mean, uh, I, I've been fortunate. I think I think he was on limited games in that top in that Westlake's top side, and with that the, the side they've got, it's difficult to break into. But he, he played both games against Holdfast Bay this season, and by my own my own eyes, he was best on ground for Westlake's in both games. So, 
Um, probably unfortunate to miss out on the finals berth when they when they eventually won the flag, but I think he may have played enough to at least get get a uh, pennant badge out of it. Well, it's interesting you say that because I actually heard from a couple of the uh, Westlake players that said he was dead unlucky to be dropped for the finals. Um, I guess it's a good problem to have. Yeah, I mean, well, I think any club would beg to have that problem where they, they're struggling yeah. to uh, fit someone in rather than try and kick someone out. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's only going going to look good for Josh... Uh, sorry, for uh, for Jack going further. Yep. And, you know, at the, at the tender age that he is, it's only going to be in a fantastic thing for him, uh, especially when he grows up into the ranks and earns that spot. So, uh, Stuart, look... Hey. Before we uh, we get the great man Mark Case, we've got uh, Sean from Bowles Victoria in town at the moment. Sean, how are you going? Good, thanks, TJ. How are you? So, Sean, what brings you into town? Uh, look, I just wanted to have a look at the uh, Super League and how it's been going for South Australia and, and hopefully with the uh, aim of bringing something like this to Victoria. Now, of course, Victoria's got a history of stealing things from South Australia. <laughs> uh, Grand Prix and, and, uh, and other events, mate. So, uh, something we expect to see come on the horizon to Victoria. <laughs> Oh look, I think I think some people are still bitter about the grand final last year, so we'll, we'll put that one behind I mean, us. Fr- from an employment stance, you can steal us for this event uh, that you're looking to build as well. Well, it's interesting <laughs> you say that. I give you, I gave him an option. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that option off air at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I did did put the shout out for uh, flights and accommodation for us, uh, Stewie. Oh, there we go. So, and I mean, we're 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 economical at the very least. <laughs> so look, uh, Victoria, Sean, big big Vols community. Um, your thoughts so far? I mean, you've been here from the pre-warm-up from about four o'clock. What What are your thoughts? Oh, look, it's fantastic the amount of you know sponsors that are around supporting it. Obviously, the the local council, city of Salisbury, and and um, the amount of teams that you've got for season one has been fantastic. So, you know, and being under under the roof here, we've got a couple of um, you know under roof greens um, at in Victoria, and it'd be great to host some things at those venues too. So. Um, just in we break, uh, we get there onto that vision there. Stuart, Jeff Davis holding holding three. I can't see Kane being too short on this one. No, absolutely not. Uh, it's a bit of, bit of a Bermuda Triangle. You'd want to make your ball disappear through that. Yeah, it's and, uh, <laughs> he's, he's certainly not shying away from it so far. Interesting thing for me, face on a Saturday head like that, mate, I could guarantee I could miss three times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be too far behind you, actually. Uh, no, that, that's that's three great balls by Jeff, and you know, given a uh, given his pedigree and whatnot, you'd fully expect him to do that kind of uh, thing in game. Because uh, I would like to, uh, I'd love to shout out poor Josh. That's a good blocker, but I don't think he's terribly happy with that one because really left an opening for uh, for Kane. So, so, so Sean, look, you know, we've eight eight teams. The makeup of in Victoria, you know, great, great boss following. Um, would eight teams be enough for your uh, for your competition? Yeah, we've got sixteen uh, regions in Victoria, so yeah. you know whether we combined a couple and, and made one team, or um, you know had had sixteen from the outset. I suppose that's the things to weigh up. But um, you know, I really like the way South Australia's put their local clubs to. Um, one Super League club, and, and yep. I think we should do exactly the same thing in that respect. It's actually um, actually interesting that you, um, you're you looking at Bowls SA over the last three to four years, um, probably at the forefront of a lot of developments, you know, uh, going back probably three years ago, Bowls Exposed, when I started hosting that through the season, whatever else, now we've got the Bowls Show on, uh, on SBS, it's come, and I do know that, you know, there was... A derivative that was probably a segue from that show to the other. Um, not, not, even, that I, not that I got any royalties from it. No, <laughs> even the, the Get on the Green radio show that I'm involved with on Coast FM, there's, yep. um, you know, I like to think Bowls has been a bit of, not so much a pioneer, but it's definitely been setting a bit of a trend with uh, increasing the media yep. range that Bowls have. And, yep. uh, you know, we're, we're a relatively small state compared to yourself and, you know, uh, New South Wales and Queensland, so... If, if it can work here, by all means, it's, uh, the success rate's only going to increase going uh, going east. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, I suppose all, all states have that common den- denominator that, you know, that the game is such an easy sell. And, you know, we're obviously a great sport that more people can take up. And, 
and definitely come along to and have a look and you know with the successes that you guys have had from that opening night you know it only holds the other states in good stead that they can do something too um, just quickly you know we've gone through the last three rounds Stuart and talking about uh, lead bowls and it's interesting a three to the uh, Mallee Pirates there all, uh, all Jeff Dave's not saying anything about Josh, but those bowls actually <laughs> stayed there. And I was actually quite surprised. I know jo Josh seemed pretty confident with his second, and you can probably blame him for not putting anything in there right, right there, right there and then. But uh, I mean, Jeff, Jeff's first bowl left a bit to be desired, but I mean, I believe he was part of that winning state triple side with Gary Meekums and Gary Thompson, so. You fully expect him to make the, the the appropriate adjustment right here, as Jack Janorden draws great with his first bowl. Do you know we, when we showcased last week the um, the junior pairing? I mean, I know that Tyson Wilson, like 19, we've got 14-year-old Nathan Black, who we said that uh, had took on at the uh, his first Adelaide Masters and beat Karen Murphy. Um, looking after the game, Karen Murphy probably wasn't open for questions. <laughs> but um, the juniors have really represented themselves extremely well here in this event. And I know that, you know, and I'm not going to point out and single anyone out because I know their mates are probably listening, or whatever else, but mm. they are a little bit nervous. It is dawning. You're up against a lot of quality players out here. But every single time they hop out on their screen, they're really representing themselves extremely well. I mean, oh, that's exactly right. I mean, when, when I look back to my era of the under-18s, I came along with the, the James, James Gregory, Max Kleinig, Mark Haynes, who are out, all out here in their late 20s now participating. And when I watch these under-18s of the now, uh, the development programs that have been set up for these guys and girls have just been so much for, for, further forwarded than what we had. And, the talent and just the natural ability level is far beyond what we could ever even hope to accomplish. Um, back in my day, state representation was sort of a, a thing that you could only think about in your dreams, let alone being a, an immediate reality coming out of the juniors. And for some of these uh, boys and girls, the, the sky's the limit for them. Well, it's um, it's interesting, and I'm sure, Sean, you, you're probably seeing similar here tonight where there's sort of a segue between the, our Saturday pennants and through to that state where a competition such as this showcases the best talent across a field of players. Are you sort of hoping with the Victorian set up to mimic this or what are you hoping to, to drive out of it? Oh look, I, de I definitely think like touching the under 18s before, I reckon that's such a fantastic aspect because um, yep. you know, uh, kids that grow up now want might want to be a part of the Northern Knights and the Mallee Pirates yep. and the likes. Mm. So. Hopefully we can establish the, the teams in Victoria and, and then go from there with, with the hope of, you know, younger uh, kids taking up the sport and, and striving to get the highest that they can. A uh, couple of comments coming through. Uh, Johnny Wise, the great man, uh, Ascot Park boy, or ex-Ascot Park, need an overhead view, boys. Um, yeah, thanks, John. We'll put that in the budget, buddy. Yeah, oh, hey, with the happy, technology, happy, happy for uh, for Wisey to come along. Um, Sharon uh, Kane, thank you. If you don't mind being hoisted up there and holding the camera, uh, like... Phil Robins, <laughs> Jeff doesn't make a very good window. Um, there's probably a list of things that he doesn't make a very good job of. Um, Marlene Ferry, that's better. Can see the yeah, exactly right. Greville Dietrich, well, uh, the Rogues triple score, please. You know, Gren, I always love to help you, mate, but. Jeez, it's, it's Friday night, mate, and that is a long way away. It's not actually, it's the rink closest. What is the score there? Actually, Zero, seven, two. No, you're actually exactly right. It is the farthest rink from us. Uh, Max Klein skipping that as he just let a bowl down. Three, four. And uh, it's three, four in, in favour of the Rogues. Uh, actually, there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, tantalising matchups in that Rogues Comets game with uh, Max Kleinig versus Scott Thulborn, two, two of the state's, the state's best. And going head-to-head -head once again, uh, as they have many a time in pennant. So just trying to help you out, Grant. I hope that uh, that gets you uh, to come on Pirates. Well, yep. I guess going back to with uh, Victoria looking to build on uh, what SA's done here, um, your junior programs have been phenomenal over the years, you know, you know, just with the likes of you know Dylan Fisher and Dane McKinnon, to name a few, who have been almost immediate seniors as soon as they get out of the junior division. Um, and I guess with your programs only looking to improve with the future as ours do, um, you know, that kind of success rate so far is surely um, going to be a bright spark uh, for what you guys are looking to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to produce more state players and then hopefully national players as well. So, you know, having them start in our junior development squad system is, 
is such a testament for what our regions do and, and um, all of our volunteers that help out with the uh, under-18 programs. Absolutely. Um, Sharon Kane suggests is maybe I can be suspended from a wire flying up and down the rink with a camera. Uh, I'll <laughs> leave that sort of stuff to Pink. She does a far better job than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pink or Cirque du Soleil. We'll see uh, whose who's, um, calendar is the most the free. La the last thing bowls in Australia want is me flying up and down this rink by a wire, I can assure you of that. Um, I'm not sure if we can operate heavy machines machinery at this hour of the night in the dark. <laughs> but thanks but thanks anyway for the vote of confidence. <laughs> I'm going to show you that's definitely not happening. Uh, <laughs> Even if it could, I feel like that we need more sort of Avengers Iron Man technology to make it properly work. Yeah. So, uh, of course, the uh, Northern Knights taking uh, an end there to uh, tighten up that, uh, that lead after uh, five ends. And it's sort of an interesting match-up. Uh, Naturally, both both Jack and I'll, I'll go go with Josh. He's uh, uh, under twenty five. You consider him in that young in that younger bowler bracket. Uh, to have Kane Cool Kane Cools up against Josh, sort of you got the young and old battle there. And then on the other side in the lead is Jeff Davis and Jack Janorton, the young and old. So even though one team's got a bit of each, uh, they're both going uh, head to head against one another in contrast. So Joe, you know, the interesting thing of uh, I look, you know. Um, had the pleasure to play on the same uh, green as Kane Calls uh, when he was actually at your club. Mm. Um, yeah, very good motivational guy. Oh, he, you know he's out on the green. Um, and you really need to work on a mental toughness to ensure that you block that sort of stuff out. But he's, he's, he's a great support. Yeah. Um, and you know what, for someone like Jack to be leading for him here, what a great experience. Exactly. I mean, you get that season's experience from playing with him in the pennants uh, when, you know, uh, when Jack got those Prem 1 promotions. But uh, I, I know from being uh, Kane's teammate at Holdfast, he's, he's basically the Ray Lewis of motivational speeches in bowls. He, just, he, he can really just get you properly fired up, geared up, mentally ready for the game. You know, you know when you get on the mat what you've got to do, but to have those words reinforced by someone of his stature who's accomplished so much... It just it just adds so much and uh, it's it's hard to describe really. Um, I guess a lot of mental games are uh, in this in this sport where you know you just get that little bit of extra reinforcement and you know it, you can you can give, get given an inch and you take a mile and you know play a great game out of it. I guess with that um, you know naturally a lot of teams are loud. Is Victoria in a similar way? You have you have your big you know huddle together, have your team chats and. You know, have have a lot of a like, lot of noise breaking out and booming out during Premier League games. What's what? How does it feel compared to a setup like this in in your uh, top division? Yeah, a few a few clubs get on board the uh, the motivational speeches. I think uh, I quite like them personally. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I reckon I reckon they go well, and um, yeah, I reckon it's a good thing when the sport does that st stuff like that. Yeah, we we haven't seen too much of it here. Um, I know, I know the Rogues, uh, particularly, uh, a lot of them are uh, from my home club, or my, my club now, rather, and they, they, they gear up around each other and really ride a good bowl, and uh, it's something that I hope will transition to the other teams and whatnot, and we've not seen a, a team talk so much. Um, I, th I think the coaches just kind of look at their teams and go, no, nah, you guys know it better than I do. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you do the rest. <laughs> Well, what, would, what do you? <coughs> it'd actually be interesting, and we maybe get one of the coaches tonight. You know, well, what do you actually say to these guys? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, you look at uh, Scott Hocking for the highest in comments, for example. You know, you got world champion Scott Thalborn in your team. Is there is there a way of really motivating him um, other than you know Jack Daniels or you know uh, what's <laughs> what what how how do you get the best out of these guys when you're uh, well, it's interesting, but I don't know what was said to Jack Trenorden, but uh, yet again, he must love coming back towards the clubhouse. I reckon his dad's back there watching, so uh, <laughs> there you go, Dad. He's a, well, yeah, he's, he started and, off a treat. And, so, Jack, and Jack's starting to get into the game. You can hear him starting a little bit more vocal now, so the confidence is building. Yeah, I mean, I, I find personally, you know, play string a few good ends together and you can you can do everything. Yeah. Uh, you get a bit of, little bit of self-belief and the yeah. sky's the limit. Now, interesting, during the week, I was in there for the midweek show, um, did a promotion for, put a mat out for the farmers. Um, look, the fun started up. We're, I think we're around $200 for tonight. Um, so, look, uh, for everyone, I know that Bowls SA are probably uh, pumping this through the other Bowls SA channel. 
So the details are there. Look, we ask everyone's viewing in. We know there's an, a lot of media in it, but these funds are committed 100% to SA farmers that are affected. And look, we look around here right now, and look, you, you can't, you couldn't throw a bowl down without getting within five feet of a farmer that's come around for the Yorks Rare Peninsula. Exactly. So please get on board. We'll give you some updates during the night where that uh, where that is. And I led to believe that Mark Easton said that they'll match dollar for dollar that's been raised. That, that, that's a fantastic effort and, and a fantastic in initiative uh, given by Bowls SA. Um, naturally, without the farmers that, you know, Australia okay. str struggles uh, not just economically, but... Uh, you could you almost know. say that if anything better was from a Victorian, they could donate a hell of a money and sink our entire bowls program, <laughs> matching dollar for dollar. Uh, we've, really, we've really put the pressure on early. Uh, sure. do, you, do you have a response to that? Uh, nah, not really. <laughs> oh, give the Grand Prix back. <laughs> uh, so it's all in good fun, but yeah, uh, the, uh, the put them out, out for a farmer, or even uh, I know a lot of pubs in South Australia doing the, the Palmer for a farmer. Yep. Um, by all means, get involved. It's it's a great and uh, much needed initiative. That's you know to the people that really you know provide for South Australia or not just South Australia but Australian families to to eat in general and um, that's their way of life. Just just quickly on that one because Josh, uh, another one of those uh, beautiful Tom Hawk drives, um, but unfortunately he still went one down. Look, he was face three down. Hey, cool yeah, cool how are you, mate? <laughs> Are you happy, Kane? We always like a happy Kane. Yeah. <laughs> Kane's definitely in good spirits early, giving us both the thumbs up yep. and a bit, bit of motivation for ourselves. I think he heard the Ray Lewis line and got inspired. I've actually played against Kane in a couple of state <laughs> events. And, you know, you sit out there, and you know, Kane's a great bloke to have a drink with and have a chat to after a game or whatever else. You get out there and play against him and you just get ice. Yeah, oh, just get ice. It, nothing. Yeah, he, he's he's a he's a stone cold competitor. Yep. Unless you're on his team, and yep. I've been on, I've been I've been I guess privileged to be on his team and against. And by all means, I definitely prefer being on his side than against. Yep. Uh, although as soon as the game's over, he'll shake your hand, give you a high five, yep. and have share a drink with you and go. Yep. Tell you what, you bowled bloody well today. And, yep, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Actually, I played one game against Kane where um, he was the best bowler in my team. No matter what, he moved that kitty around every time he did. He managed to drop a number against himself oh. and he was not happy. So probably didn't get that chat after the game from him. But I did watch him pack his bowls up and move <laughs> off pretty quickly. <laughs> probably, uh, probably one of the very few that have seen that side. Yeah, he actually had uh, Aaron Bremner with him at the time. Uh, in pairs. Uh, they're actually being belted with rain up in uh, around, the, I'd, I'd suggest, Riverton area at the moment. But not where it's needed. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not here at the moment. And Sharon, I'd... Lovely for you to have it at the moment. Yeah, it's been slightly on and off so far. I know there were those 40k wins predicted, but been largely calm for the most part. And uh, for the sake of the bowls, at least, uh, that's only a good thing. Um, yep. I mean, I've, I've been in some windy conditions, but I don't think I've ever been in 40 plus uh, trying to bowl against it. Just um, just quickly, and give you an update in the uh, in going back, working further this way back towards us. Of course, your brother starring heavily in the triples over there, uh, Stuart. 13 zip against the Northern Knights in the triples. Uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of great one Forbesy, and, you know, I'm only human. I thought that was about my commentary. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and of course, um, uh, we've got um, Doring down at the moment. Uh, no, correction? Yeah, he's down. Yeah, eight down, four. down eight to four. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Darren Warner really really giving the business to one of the state's finest and uh, Simon, the only a recent uh, signee for Salisbury Bowling Club, recently leaving Modbury so this now being his home ground um, and of course having that fantastic draw against Simon Geta Johnson in round one so um, naturally while, you, while you'd be uh, you wouldn't be wrong to expect more from Simon, but I think that only just goes to show how great Darren's performing at this stage. Uh, just quickly, if people are curious why Forbes and I stutter occasionally when we're giving out the scores, it's not because we're illiterate. It's actually because there are players, coaches, officials walking around the boards and whatever else. So, look, in reality, uh, we're trying to give you the, the best. And, uh, mate, uh, the triples have folded. They've tripped. Mate, they've, uh, they've got a score against them now, so uh, everyone keeps keep their head up. Yeah, I, I don't think it's emergency stations right yet for the Pirates, but uh, you know, to fight, after six cents to drop that first, you, I, I know if, I'm, if I get on, onto a good start, your immediate reaction to 
losing an end is right. Let's make them pay for yep. that, be it big or small number. Um, but anyway, something more pressing to home. We'll get back to this Pairs game, which will actually be interesting to commentate on for a couple of minutes, I'm sure, everyone at home if, watching yeah. the vision. And, uh, we, we managed to go from segue to segue, but it, uh, by all means, it's a fantastic game to be in front of, and uh, we, we've not really given it the attention that it deserves uh, just yet. No, but uh, Young Jack Norton again holding shot. Uh, Kane Cole's lining up. Josh Thompson just sailed through, narrowly missing picking up the kitty. He's, he's twirling them. He's twirling. He loves it. When he twirls. What? Yeah, the, you get the twirl and the chase. Look you know it's this. pretty he, close. He, he say, there you go. That's a fantastic he, shot yeah. right there. And in a good position. Ed edges his ball closer. Um, yeah. And, and, w -A -N -T next time, mate. and sits, sits right... <laughs> We uh, just, just had one of our supervisors, Matt Northcott, approach us uh, with a message on his phone. And of course, TJ had to correct his spelling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> t yeah, TJ, the con the consummate English prof professor. <laughs> although, although I, got, I once got blocked on your Facebook by correcting you via the same method. So, <laughs> uh, John Nikolai, hi, Mr. T Johnny Nikolai. Hi, Mr. Mr. TJ. Hey, my uh, my great skipper from our NBA side. Um, so uh, yeah, I have the pleasure, ex state player, John Nikolai. Get the pleasure of playing three for him on uh, on a few events throughout the year, which is uh, which is always good. I guess you could say his involvement with the state side. Uh, you can call him Mr. Mildura. Uh, there, there's seldom a Mildura trip where John Nicolas not in the list of players. Yeah, and I reckon there's another player that got him in that one to prefer. I've actually heard the story, but <laughs> it's uh, put it this way: when he's not on that Mildura trip, it's an empty trip. <laughs> As, and uh, speaking of empty trips, Josh Thompson lets one rip and oh. well kills it. And it's Could a show more control, sir. It's a smorgasbord of yellow balls at the back. Oh, yeah. So we're, we, we're we're at a guess at the what it is because uh, there, there's Jeff's there's yellow down. and bright yellow. And we're not down. entirely sure. So Jeff Davis <laughs> has called three down. Yep, Kane says I'll take three. So um, yeah, well, so that's uh, a tough one. I think we're going to be joined by Kane. So we're going to get nice. I reckon we'll get nice cane. Yeah, entertaining. Uh, got a three. We got three, that. Three, three, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so you, uh, mate, seesaw about young Jack holding his own really well. Going well. Going well. Good lad. Yep. Big future. So, uh, yeah, uh, he keeps doing what he's doing. I think we're in for a good night. Yep. And make my life a bit easier as an old bloke as well. So, Well, we actually <laughs> mentioned that, mate. We can see a bit of, uh, bit of the old uh, cold air slowing you down a little bit, brother. That's <laughs> <laughs> you, mate. So uh, yeah, Kane, Kane, full of praise for for his uh, for his lead for, for his lead, and of and course, uh, you know, fellow teammate Westlake's young. I mean, it's interesting. You, know, you look at the um, the clubs players who talk about player movements throughout the year, whatever else. But have a look at at Westlake's. You've got uh, Mark Haynes, Josh Troppen, who are actually out there on the screen at the moment. I saw them warming up earlier. All mm. come through from junior still with the club. Yeah, well. Uh, the uh, you sort of call it the holy trinity of juniors. Uh, J James Gregory included in those yep. two. Um, who is out in the green at the moment? Yeah, uh, uh, who, who's his, also yeah, out uh, there. Josh, Josh Dunham, uh, your fellow teammate. Yeah, uh, that's that's a, actually a tantalising matchup. Ashley Close and Josh Studham versus Ben Harris and James Gregory. That's Ben, uh, ben Salty Harris. Uh, ben, ben Salty Harris, sorry. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean th those three. They've they've really set a standard at Westlake. So they've. I, I mean, I, I've been at Marion where we had a few juniors and, and now Holdfast and the, uh, Westlake's have always been the forefront for junior promotion. And you see that with the with, with Hainsey, Jimmy and Chops and then you look into, say, uh, Aaron Haynes, Alex Smith and uh, now Jack and Isaac Trenorden uh, who are, you know, a lot of them involved in this tonight. That's, you know, that's the blueprint for what a lot, a lot of bo uh, clubs should be striving towards. Because uh, Phil, Phil Fechner tuned in. Well, Phil, I don't know how you tuned in. We're actually at your home club. Yeah. Because coming from Nuriupta, your old club. Yeah. Uh, here to Salisbury this only, season. Only left Nuri this past off season. Yep. Thought he was going to join me at Holdfast because uh, we, we've got the most prestigious club pairs record of no wins, one loss. Um, awesome. <laughs> got, got robbed on that on an umpire's decision. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> The less said about that, the better, because we can we, we Have a look. At, sorry, just have a look at that. The G look, this environment is not fordering young Jack. Oh, it's not at all. That's three fantastic bowls by him. And uh, Again. I mean, I know Coolsy joked about uh, 
him improve, stepping his game up a little bit to take a bit of pressure off. But I'm starting to wonder where this pressure came's uh, imagining almost. Yeah, I'll just look it on. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's almost it's. So I don't know. How, how do you bowl with no pressure? Would have to ask him on the next crossover. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd probably be rude to say I've never felt that, but. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I've, cr I've crossed over Don't six up, so I know what no pressure is. I'll tell you what, uh, last time I saw a smile like that, I got given a new bike. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Phil Beckner at the Williamstown for at Williamstown for a few days, so he's uh, is it? We, yeah, well, it's a, recently what, fifteen twenty minute drive. Well, had recently moved to Mawson Lake, sold up his uh, his Tanunda home, and uh, good, Maybe back in the forgot where he lived. Back in the Barossa for a few. <laughs> I, I thought he would turn into a bed and breakfast. Personally, it was a oh, fantastic well, house. Go. They have a little, so, you know, this, that's actually a great home. Gary Thompson yelling out Forbesy, and I don't know if he's talking to me or my brother. <laughs> I can pretty well safe to assure that the Forbes he's talking to, he's looking at at the moment, he ain't looking at you. Yeah, they, <laughs> they're having a meeting, I feel like I should. You go you over know, there and have a chat? If, if, we had a, if we had a wireless mic, I could probably, like, pitch invade, yeah. invade for, a, for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's something for Bowls to say to think of uh, factor in next yeah, week. Looking over that triple stage, should I? Don't know if you're invited, but we'll go back <laughs> to the pairs. They, they don't need any distractions. They're, they're uh, setting themselves off perfectly well. Uh, that triple is indeed 13 to 1 after 6. So, uh, yeah, my brother Adam, for those that know him, uh, really setting the benchmark he uh, high early on. So Kane just adding to that count. I reckon he's holding a very good four. Yeah, four, four to the... Well, I don't know what an ugly four is, but four is four. Uh, I, think, I think an ugly four is four down. I think an ugly four is a is a thick edge over slips in cricket. <laughs> of course, uh, <laughs> Josh uh, Josh ruining the party there. So. Yeah, c comes in uninvited once again. Uh, no, good bowl to, uh, great to young Josh. Definitely leaves himself an option with the last bowl. Exactly right. Um, I, mean, I, I know I know for Kane's position, there, there's potential to make five out of that. Definitely cut it down to three. Uh, sits it through with a couple couple feet. Five out of that's really going to put a nice bit of scoreboard pressure. And uh, considering how the the Pirates are going on the other rink, they're not only they're not only playing their direct opponents, but they're they're fighting the scoreboard too. Well, it's interesting. You know, you're nine six up on the board, holding two at the head, got a ball in the hand. I don't know. Maybe he goes to the back. Yeah, I mean, that's every that's every chance. The way the jack's positioned in front of everything, not a huge target and not quite the guarantee. But uh, but you, we know if you hit that anything, but it's six and twelve o'clock. That's um, true. That kitty's going out of bounds. Yeah, so he's I, I, the back and they go three down. Uh, Josh, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get a response so, out of him. Josh, yeah. you're going to play heavy, or you're going to play extremely heavy with this one? Uh, he's gone yeah. with extremely, so. At least we knew exactly what kind of shot he was going to go with that. Yeah. As well, Kane you puts saw him, on Jack you saw him flick his hand out there. You know that he's going for out of bounds. He's got three at the back. The, you know, even I, if he uses uses Kane's bowl, it's not going to be in danger because um, that's going out of bounds. Well, exactly right. You get the inside edge off that. That ball's only going to pile into the head anyway, and he lets it go. Well, I tell you well what, he's cleaned a, everything up. That's, that's that bowl was nearly gone onto the railway line. That's, he, he somehow split. Uh, Kane's ball and Jack and just ripped the head apart so well two he was already two down two down two down he got that kitty at that weight that kitty was probably going to hit uh, Salty Harris over there in the other game uh, well I mean he only missed the Jack by the barest of margins as well so you can't even be upset with that kind of result two, thanks and, mate and that's two to the Knights as they continue to extend their Push lead. Push that away to 11-6. Uh, 11, I mean, you got to feel for Josh Thompson in that area. He was so close but Ooh. and yet so far. Ooh, jeez. Uh, See, uh, we're going to hit with that. That's actually moving quicker than uh, than Josh. Yeah, m meanwhile, Darren, Darren, Warner, Darren Warner misses the drive on rip. Three down to Simon Dorr. Hey, uh, now, here we go. We're joined with jo Josh. That was absolutely a cracking hit. Unlucky. Trying to get that out of bounds to the left. Yes, uh, out of bounds to the left for hopefully two or three. I well, mean, you, you missed it by the barest of millimetres. Yeah. You know, is, what, I mean, does that go through your mind? Do you go, what could have been? Or are you happy that the fact that you were in the vicinity and, you know, you ripped a few out and cut down? Oh, yeah. Well, I think we're four or five down, so, yeah. You I'm sure? very happy to, oh, okay. you know, get it out. This is, we're going to get you need to uh, change colour of your bowls, actually, mate, because I actually had you, <laughs> I actually had you two down, two down, two down. Mate, 
So maybe we'll get a six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, time for some new bowls, I think. Yeah, but nah, mate, look, keep on going. Yeah, oh, well, you know you you'll, will. You'll do all right. I mean, between you and Kane, it looks like you're holding six every time, but I'm sure we'll we'll <laughs> we'll eventually adapt to that. Yeah. Uh, as I said, one's one's yellow, one's slightly lighter yellow. <laughs> or we can just look at the uh, the bolt rings. Yeah, I mean, not not always easy once they fall on their side, but uh, it is it is though at night. It is a different look at night out here, particularly from the situation and that angle we're sitting at. As said, when they when they're bowling away from us, as they are at the moment, a little bit further away, that head were almost sitting over the top of that. Yeah, little, pretty much. Pretty short end. <laughs> that was as close as you can expect. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, now I must say, uh, with with the end that we're currently on, um, you would you might be privy to. There we go. So. Um, here we well, well here we I'm go. I've lost mate. the words right lost now. Words. You're sitting <laughs> sitting next to Mark Case. Yeah, it's actually pretty special, Forbesy. Uh, this this is a special moment for me when I when I was a young lad uh, as a as a left hander. This was the guy that I could only dream of being, and was lucky enough to play against him in the lead up to World Bowls back in 2012. And well, sitting right beside him. Uh, so Mark Casey, uh, from a personal perspective, welcome, and uh, for everyone, uh, welcome to welcome to the booth. Yeah, thanks, Stu. It's a pleasure to be here. It's uh, obviously a fantastic setup here at Salisbury, um, and, and what a fantastic night! It's a, a great idea, great concept. This, and yeah, it's I think it's a, a brilliant idea from Bowl South Australia. Well done. Yeah, we we're talking earlier. Um, we had Sean from Bowls Victoria having a look around. Mark, we mentioned earlier when the um, in the stream that you were here and um, a bit of promotion about uh, a UBC. Yeah, obviously, just recently I've. Um, uh, just left Bowls Australia and, and decided to start up a new company, um, Ultimate Bowls Championship. So it's a it's a championship which will be designed for TV to try and to attract the new bowler, um, just generate some I guess enhance the interest into our sport. And uh, we've been able to put it put together a really uh, fantastic broadcast package that um, we'll see lawn bowls on TV um, a lot more than what it is now. So uh, overall, it's going to be uh, just fantastic for for the sport. That's great. Look, you know, we often say that oh, I mean, if you're around many, many moons ago, that um, we have to break. That's uh, that's probably the uh, best bowl we've seen from Josh all night. We must have inspired him, Forbes, when he came over with that uh, that that candor and banter we had. I, I guess he said so hard it brings out the best in people. It does. We are we're inspirational coaches. Um, just going back to that. Look, you know, back in that many many moons ago, Jack High that went off the air. Yeah, we've had the, um, you know, from a South Australian perspective, bowls exposed. We've had the bowl show. But, Mark, look, any, I guess, any media, any promotion of our game is always good promotion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, we're not a, a high-profile sport. You know, we, we've definitely taken um, really good steps in the last sort of 10 or so years. Um, but on the back of, you know, Australia's campaign of the Commonwealth Games, the most successful team ever, um, I think our sports, you know, got some opportunities in the next couple of years to really grow, and um, you know, and that's you know, that's all we're trying to do is, is get more people into our sport, and you know, like, like we're doing tonight, you know, there's I don't know, there's probably 150 people here. It's pretty cold night, but uh, it just shows if we can design new concepts, um, you know, it does generate a lot of interest. Well, you know, and it's really good that people get behind the, the changes. So that dirty, uh, that dirty word that people use as changes, is often feared. But, you know, I think that what we've got here is people embracing that change. Does that mean that people are looking for something different ongoing? Mm. We don't know. We need to obviously explore that a little bit more. But, you know, with what you're promoting through your um, your UBC, it's definitely saying to, to the world of bowls, hey, yeah. there's, there is some different stuff out and people are getting connected with it. Exactly. Like the, the non-bowler these days, you know, unfortunately they can't afford to spend three or four hours... Um, playing the sport, let alone watching the sport. So, you know, our our events are designed to be quick and fast, and um, we'll have a result every 25 minutes. And our scoring system, uh, it's a bit like the darts formula that every bowl can potentially score points for their team. So, um, yeah, we, we feel it's really exciting, and we feel like we've got a great product, and it's been really well well received uh, from clubs and, and companies. So, it's exciting times for the sport. That's excellent. So when, when do you envisage uh, the UBC kicking off? Yeah, the first event um, will be at the end of uh, March. So it, the, the, it hasn't been announced uh, whereabouts yet. So we'll do a, 
I guess, a, a, an announcement over that in the next couple of weeks. But uh, it is a club in New South Wales. We'll, we'll hold the first event. Um, so we'll have three events a year. Uh, and we've got, obviously, free-to-air TV and Fox Sports. So you can either come down to the venues when they, when they do get announced or um, you can sit at home or at a club and, and tune in, which, is, uh, which would be fantastic. Excellent. So, look, uh, a little bit of update. It, as this uh, this Pairs game continues to seesaw backwards and forwards, you know, rally, as Josh said, it wasn't over and it's not over, you know, taking another end. Yeah, and exactly. Je well, Jeff, sorry enough, Jeff Jeff going uh, going the long game again. Yeah, well, it, it seems to be the trend. Uh, when, when they went long the first time, they really made the most of that. I think given the, the sheer consistency of Jack and Kane combined, it's only going to... It's going to be a tough battle regardless, considering the Knights lead. So if you don't change something up or at least explore new ways of at least uh, reducing that gap, uh, you're only just laying down and uh, letting uh, the, the Knights do exactly what they please on the green. And I think everyone's a competitor out here. No one wants to just uh, lo lo lose graciously. You want, you want to try and get that win. You know, again, again, Jeff, Jeff Davis, seasoned campaigner, but he, he leaves probably two and a half feet. And Jack Trenorden just draws it in there and says, you know what, you leave me a garage door and I'll park it in there. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, you know, it didn't even look like scraping the garage wall. No, um, he parked it straight in. Having said that, uh, Jeff's firmly adjusted well, just slightly yeah. wide, but just, I mean, that's yeah. a, a fantastic and much needed correction regardless. The form that Jack's in currently, it's going to take, you know, bowls like that and then some to really swing the momentum. Absolutely. So, Mark, we've been talking about the juniors uh, over the last uh, three weeks and of course. So tonight, when, when did you get involved in the game? Yeah, I actually started when I was five or six. I'm originally from Melbourne. Um, so back then, uh, we couldn't even, you, you weren't even allowed to join a bowls club. You had to be over 18. So I played a thing that uh, was called Bankers, um, which is just your, your one, the, the players that didn't get a game in your pennant team and they played on the ditch rink and played for a couple of hours. So I joined the I guess the, the older guys in, in that for a couple of years and um, slowly got into it from there. But I think the, the big move for me when, when my family, mum and dad decided to, to move to Queensland and on the Gold Coast and I sort of took up the sport pretty much full on since, since then, which was uh, when I was age 15. Yep. So which club did you start with in, uh, in the Gold Coast? Uh, I joined the South Tweed Bowls Club. Um, yep. That was where Kelvin Kirko was from. Um, yep. So he was a bit of an idol of mine and uh, we often went up there for holidays and, and watched Kelvin play and all I, all I wanted to do was play with him and luckily enough I joined that club and Kelvin virtually took me under his wing there for a few years and um, yeah it was great, I, I learned a lot off Kelvin and, and still do which is good. great. Of course um, <coughs> recently played it seemed like an eternity, it was always uh, good, uh, uh, every day was awesome with uh, Wayne Turley and the uh, players there at uh, Tweed. Of course, uh, and Kelvin Kirk has moved from South Tweed up to Tweedhead. Big yeah. move, probably a mile up the road. I say, speaking of Wayne Turley, still the fastest drive I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he lets that he lets that go like a rocket ship. <laughs> Just a little uh, fun fact for myself. <laughs> nah. G going into the uh, just dipping into a few comments. Uh, Kerry L. Johnson, single score, please. Uh, the current score is 12 to 8 in favour of the Knights. So that's Darren Warner leading Simon Dorr. Uh, we also extend a hello to Alison Saunders live from Camden Park. Uh, Maureen Duggan uh, saying a great bowl to Josh. And Joan Delaforce saying go Knights. So the Knights. Sure she leaves the pizza with a lot for me. <laughs> so uh, so the, the Knights the night supporters in, in full effect tonight. <laughs> so, uh, Alison, I've been instructed to say to leave the pizza out, uh, or if you, or, or get an get an extra, get an extra. There's a meat lovers and there's a pizza with a lot. The one with a lot more. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we're back in and um, the uh, the Mally Porrett's holding one, but you know what? Any movement of that jack and it's going to be uh, anyone's game. Precisely, uh, Coolsy quick to Ooh, quick on sideways head. Yeah, very go for the bobblehead look. Very quick on the mat there, but he has let it go rather well. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't draw a shot. I'd be surprised if it made it. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, couple, couple differing opinions, and yours, yours was right. Yeah, I called it late though. I cheated. <laughs> I don't think he'd be full of pepper when he walks past us the next time. 
Nah, with, nah, with a bowl like that, you expect full focus, and he's definitely going to... Very rarely have I seen Kane play a shot like that and not improve on it, so fully expecting him to make that adjustment. Uh, well, Jack just having a uh, bit of a bow poke. To play. I like, I like, I actually, when you're learning from someone like Kane, and of course Jack calls it on the other hand, and Kane says, "Well, can I?" Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pull it over arm if you want. Um, well, I've played Ashley. Clo I've played with Ashley close for years, and quite often he goes, "Oh, can I get that in the, my forehand?" And I look at it and go, "Well, you can." Oh, I tell you, I tell you what, just just quickly on that shot there, it was. We'll go lay a map for the farmer, get a pool together of how many people reckon that they can, he could actually hit that gap again. Well, <laughs> that, was fan that was a fantastic effort. The fact that it even missed the jack, I still don't know how it meant. I don't know, know how it didn't hit any of that. Yeah. Is the narrowest it, it, it defied physics by my, by my estimations. Not that I'm a physicist. Um, but, yeah, that was a fantastic effort. Just probably unlucky to get a result of any, re any response, be it bad or good, but... Uh, the, the pirates the pirates escape and uh, say a hi from uh, we say a hello to Billy McLeod from Scotland so I think you've won the prize for probably our most distanced viewer so thank you very much for tuning in it's great to see that we're you know bowls uh, South Australia and bowls in generals getting worldwide let alone just ar around our uh, beautiful country of ours and Ashley Raymond Thomas, uh, a, new, a fellow Barossa man. What's Adam playing? He is number two in the triples. Current score is 15 to three in favour of Adam's triples. Uh, and Peter Thornton, finally. Hope Warner is not ball tampering. I'm pretty sure it's not that Warner, but uh, uh, whatever he's doing, he's doing it well as he's holding three currently. Put something, something yellow in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he's just marking his own touches. <laughs> A little bit of uh, room for improvement there, but as we as we've said the last Friday night we played here, as that <laughs> that cool breeze comes in, the green changes that possibly was around three o'clock this afternoon when the cool breeze came in. Well, it was looking fantastic early this morning. Um, don't know when you got in, Mark, but I mean you must have thought you were right at home on the Gold Coast yeah. <laughs> before uh, before four o'clock. Yeah, well, I was actually just got in this morning. I've been in Melbourne all week visiting clubs down there and. Uh, it was a little bit chilly down in Melbourne, but my flight actually got cancelled. Uh, the first flight out, so I uh, I got the the next one and, and got in about uh, about lunchtime, and it was definitely was uh, getting cold by then. Yeah, I remember I remember just looking at the forecast. And you could see the the cloud cover coming in over the sea, and just went. I hope it holds off a few more hours. Thinking, you know, might get a. a a nice calm night tonight, but she, uh, what Mother Nature was not to be stopped. But it hasn't cer hasn't certainly hindered the, the stand of the bowling. I think they performed admirably uh, in the in the in the conditions. So the score now uh, 11 8 as uh, as on the screen. 10 ends gone. Tell you what, we'll talk about technology and the improvement over it. You know, it's only 12 months ago that people were running up and down a green with a with a smartphone in their hand filming the game. Um, now, you know, the cameras at each end, you can, you can, obviously we've graduated in this event from the smartphones at each end because we understood that the internet connection wasn't working too well, yeah. upgraded <laughs> those to proper fixed cameras, which is awesome, as I said, the uh, Sports SA show have really helped us out here, supporting us uh, with it, but, you know, we've got the, uh, the, uh, the scores updating all the time rather than having to verbal them, although thank you very much to everyone listening in, you want us to give you scores from the furthest point on the green. Um, I can tell you now that uh, the Scott Tholburn game's 12-9. Uh, well, I mean, you wouldn't expect much more uh, between Thully and Max Kleinig, both phenomenal players, and the, they, they've, had, they've had a great friendship over many a year. Uh, I was only privy to a bit of text conversation between them earlier in the day where they were both saying... Uh, yep. So we're going to be knocking each other off. <laughs> Greg Hughes uh, wants to know what bowls they're using. Greg, they're using lawn bowls. That's actually uh, something pretty <laughs> common out here. I don't know why they will choose that, but yeah, I was just very surprised. C certainly beats a curling marble. Um, but I, I know I know that uh, I think Coolsy's using Greymaster Premiers. He's had them for a long, long time. 
Prob probably overdue for a change, but w I mean, when you go bowl that good, uh, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Uh, I can tell you, young Jack Norden uses arrows. Um, Josh, I think, uses spears the way he throws them down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's essentially a glorified, di um, j not not uh, discus, but a uh, shot put. Yeah, oh, I was going to say javelin. I was going to say shot put, given how how weighted they are. Um, whatever, he sends them down at some speed. Could have could have could have set a scud missile because it never hits its target. Of course, hoping that Josh goes home and watches this because uh, all comments are intended for his viewing pleasure only. I think you'll be in for a very rough midweek show um, if, he, if he does happen to tune in. And give him all, all well, if it, uh, if it isn't the great Nige Ryan, Nige, how are you, mate, over in Tumby Bay? Yeah, one of the foremost greenkeepers in South Australia, yep. uh, looking after most notably uh, Hawthorne and Ascot Park, among many, many others. Yep. Um, a fantastic, uh, well, whenever I hear a green's been under Nigel Ryan's control, I just know it's in, in very good care. <laughs> Greg, well, we know that uh, we know that Greg's got a sense of humour because he's amazed that they're not cannonballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got to have a sense of humour to be a lawn bowler, I, uh, I'm going to show you that. <laughs> and, uh, well, fantastic. Uh, fantastic shot by Josh Thompson there as Kane Cools heads back to the map. He's not happy. I think he's going to tackle him. Well, <laughs> we'll see if Kane can teach him how to draw. Well, the way Josh tr tried that, you don't really want to change it too much. Uh, well, he's got everything coming in. Yeah, Coolsy. Oh, we got sideways head. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, oh, we got the bobble head. This is going to be good. If the bobble and the flicking of the rag. I really like to call it the magpie. Oh, how long a sec? No, hang on a sec. Uh, he's throwing us off there. Yeah, uh, fantastic shot for Josh Thompson. As it looks, two shots three. through the Pirates. Three shots. Three. Even. He's four. taking three out. Four. Yeah, four. There we go. Four, four through the Pirates. That's a fantastic result from Josh. Well, I mean, a fantastic running shot. Uh, he sent that down with laser speed on this. I'm lost for words. I'd like to say even a broken clock's right twice a day, but geez, tell you what, he absolutely hammered that down. <laughs> and he sent it down that fast. By the time it actually hit the jack, we hadn't even registered it had left his hand yeah. yet. So. He, I, know, I know Josh prides him on his running shot, but that was... Uh, even, even for him, that was something out of the ordinary in you terms might, of speed. You get in the picture now that Mark Easton, um, CO Bowls SA, has worded Josh up to uh, be careful of burning the groin. The mat's <laughs> actually uh, starting to singe. Well, that's exactly right. Um. <laughs> I, actually think, I actually think Mark was saying, no, you're in way of the camera, mate. Get out of the way. You won't be warned again. <laughs> Well, with, with bowls that fast, you want to put a speed camera in front of them just to see just exactly what he's doing with those. So, yeah. Oh, of course, we've got Nathan Pedersen. Where is Case? Um, what do you want, an orange Case, Pedo? What, uh, he's here with us, mate. I think uh, Pedo's looking for you, Case. Yeah, g'day, Pedo. How you going, mate? <laughs> and uh, David Sims. Uh, David Sims asks, where's Hilly? Unfortunately, he is in Glossop in the Riverland couldn't uh, when, he, when he knew he was playing the 6pm game he actually couldn't make it down tonight from the, from there uh, it's, a, it's, a th it's a three hour drive minimum uh, I believe uh, you know considering traffic and everything so could, couldn't get here if he was, he was, if he was playing the 8pm 8, 8 game which is coming up in, a, in not too long uh, he would have been available but unfortunately couldn't make the drive down and uh, Nathan, Nathan Pedersen says hello so uh uh, I presume I presume that's to all of us, possibly just to. Uh, just it's just to, to me. No, nah, it's just to me. <laughs> well, why isn't Nathan Pedersen in this competition? I thought, I would have thought uh, he would have loved to be in part of this tonight. Yeah, well, Pedo, look, put your comments on the screen. Let us know why you're here. Yeah, I think I think that's a question for him. Uh, yeah, he can answer that one. I understand he was doing some stuff in Sydney, but I I mean I'm not his manager, so I can't confirm nor deny. He's definitely the type of player that we want in the, the UBC, so hopefully he, uh, he's still playing well and can uh, can enter the UBC when we 
do our player registrations in the next couple of weeks. And of course, Case said, uh, Pedro, if you can actually spell UBC, you're <laughs> half a chance. Lucky their spell check on computers, so I reckon he might be pretty, uh, pretty in pretty safe hands. Expecting a really rude, rudely worded message back. I don't expect any message back, actually, because that probably says enough on its own. Yeah. <laughs> there's uh, there's 100, 109 people. Let's get that to 200. Share it out. Let's get around it. Don't forget uh, the, uh, as we said before, the uh, layer map for a farmer. The uh, details have been on Bowls SA webpage now most of the week, supporting uh, SA farmers. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, fantastic initiative. And as we cross over, uh, Jack Trenorden leaving Kane Cools two shots up and forcing Josh to play with weight early. Um, <laughs> of course, Pedro spelled it UFE, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. And, well... Oh, you're joking. I've seen many a thing in my bowls career, but I've never seen such a shot. So, no, jo well, Josh slightly improved the situation, I think, there. It's still two down, but... Uh, Slicing Jack behind one, you'd think he can actually play that onto his own with a bit of draw weight now. Um, I mean, the way it wobbled, you'd think that it w was actually going to roll in four shot. But, uh. So, Mark, your thoughts, um, mate? You know, you, you're driving up into a head such as this. You get the result. Is it? Is it? Just good management up into the head, have to hit something, or is there an yeah, enormous amount of luck involved? I guess when you play with weight, you, there's always a little bit of luck um, required. So I guess as long as you give the, you give your ball a chance and you're in the area, um, and if, you, if you're down, I guess there's nothing to lose. So um, that's, a, I guess, the biggest rule in the book. If you, if you are down, make sure you're up and you're always in with a shot. Well, as you said there, Forbes, you called it. He came up, uh, just gave that a bit of a tap. Look, he's improved it by one. He's only one down now, but you know, it's interesting. You probably wouldn't want to go in on that hand with an enormous amount of weight. Now, that hand has been historically tricky uh, over the series of the, li of the live streams. So uh, it's a very fine line to find. Uh, and you don't want to go overly wide because it has got a bit of a tendency to hold up. So... Uh, as we hear Matt Northcott over the Tannoy. Um, yeah, it's one of, one of those things. It's, it's a fine line to be right and wrong. Um, and even even if you're not exactly perfect, there's still just a, a tiny chance that you could get the desired result. So the overall score is uh, Northern Knights 30, uh, Mallee Pirates 40 um, on the, uh, the big board. Um, yeah, you're looking across at the triples. Um, 11 ends are on their 12th ends. About four, 14, I'd suggest. As we said, players in the way. We'll give you a single score when um, when Darren Warner moves up to the mat. So 16-10 six, in favour of uh, Darren Warner over Simon Dorr. So Forbesy. Yeah, he's someone of uh, Simon Dawes' calibre, probably probably not used to a, a bit of a margin like that. You wouldn't think it'd be a regular occurrence. No, nah, not at all. Um, you know, he, he's he's won basically every singles title, bar maybe the state singles, uh, two-time reigning state, uh, sorry, two-time reigning Modbury singles champion, um, only beating uh, Nathan Pedersen, who we previously m mentioned in, in both finals. So who was now established can't spell. Yeah, so. Um, you know, th this would be unfamiliar territory for him, but he's also the kind of guy that you fully expect him to just step it up that extra notch necessary to, to climb back and get in front. Naturally, not being a 21 up, he's, he's running out of ends to, to do that. So, uh, Well, you know, he's picked up a, he's picked up a tee. Case, walk us through it, mate. You know, you've, I heard they were going to bring your record in for us to have a look at, but we weren't allowed to bring heavy machinery here to drop it down in front of us. But no, you've probably been involved in plenty of singles games there. You're down by you're down by half a dozen or now four shots. You're running out of ends, mate. What's going through your head? I guess you just got to if you are down, you know, by four or five. I guess I'd try and win the next. Uh, just try and win two ends in a row. If you get you know two twos, you're back in the game. But um, your first bowl, I think, in singles is your is your most important. Like if 
if Simon obviously gets within a, a foot or less, um, he also all of a sudden puts the pressure on the, the opposition. So it's always the first bowl. Um, and if he, if vice versa, if he does it to you, the next thing that you're under the pump. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, so, you know, na naturally a lot largely depends on how your direct opponent performs. But, um, yeah, it's, it's clearly what, what you do first to, you know, hopefully alter what they're, what they're potentially going to do, I guess. Exactly. And, and if, if the opposition, if you've got first bowl and you don't take full account of that, um, then all of a sudden the opposition has got last bowl too, which is another advantage in singles. So, uh, and it looks like the uh, this bowl is quite good. So it's, uh, it's up to Simon now to, to perform. Yeah, so uh, g given that it's difficult to see on the live stream, Simon uh, put his bowl just slightly short and Darren Warner uh, behind and actually still shot with the first. So really, you know, couldn't emphasise much more on what Mark was saying. The, the first bowl's critical, especially when you're chasing and, uh, you know, couldn't ask for a more picture-perfect example of uh, what you were saying. Um, look... <coughs> Obviously, uh, you know, we can see in the background a bit of a crowd form. That's, of course, for the 8 o'clock game. And uh, perfect introduction for Steve Grant, coach of the Eastern Raiders. Hello, good evening all. So, mate, uh, game plan tonight? You're sort of uh, hot and cold through. You're sitting probably around midfield. Uh, are you happy with the uh, performance of your team so far? Yeah, look, I think we've played, uh, out of the three games, we've probably played two of the best sides. So, um, And we had a good win last week in the last game against one of the best sides in the Western Rogues. And um, just shows you how quick the game can change because I think there was probably 11 or 12 shots down on the overall board with 10 or 15 minutes to go and um, got up comfortably in the end. So, you know, you win a couple of power balls, uh, super ends, and um, it can make a big difference. So, yeah. So you're obviously pretty comfortable with your triples format. You've kept uh, you've kept that fairly win Laney McGorman heading that Chris Flavel skipping. Um, your singles, you you're looking to switch that up around. And and I have to ask one big question. Everyone has to play a game. When do we see the introduction of the coach? Uh, this is too cold for me out here, mate. I'm a warm weather player, so. <laughs> So ask for Mark, he'll tell you. <laughs> so for any anyone interested, I reckon we I think we've just got Sunday because we've got one Sunday, one Friday left in the in the tournament. So uh, we're going to be looking for you somewhere in that round five and six. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> of course, look, I think it's uh, you know we've been talking in the commentary and um, you've probably had a look at it, whatever. That yeah, you know, the juniors through this have really performed well. They haven't been overly nervous and they've stood up and performed. Um, your thoughts on the juniors? Yeah, well, we played uh, against the Mallee Pirates last week and uh, Bailey, is it? She yeah, Bailey played ex she played exceptionally well. So, uh, yeah, uh, good experience for them as well, playing against the top-class players. So, um, look, you know, a bit of a difference today. Who's uh, who's representing you in the uh, in the pairs today? I think, um, I think we did swap it around, but... Yeah, Tony Trelaw and Mitch Percy. Yeah, and uh, and obviously uh, sitting in the uh, in the prestige seat of the singles. That is. That, well, no, no, I think you might have it wrong, mate. I've got. Uh, I think Tony's playing the Tony, singles. Yeah, Tony Lucas yeah. is he? No, Tony Trelaw's playing the singles. Oh, Tony Trelaw's playing the singles at yeah. Tony Lucas in the pairs. That's right. You got too yeah. many Tonys, mate. That's it. There's too you have many to start drafting them out, outside. switching them around. <laughs> There's only one Steve Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, look, your expectations. Yeah, look, look. You know, other than your side. Yeah. Of course, you know your own side. Your prediction for the overall winner. Well, I still think it'll be out of the uh, Western Rogues and the Central Chargers. It's uh, interesting. I think that uh, you know I was asked off camera a very similar question. I said I think it comes down to player availability. I think as we head into the last two or three rounds there's some player movement or unavailability okay. and I think charges are affected by one big one okay. well, which is uh, big effect then Wayne, the Wayne Rudiger I think may have played his last game Okay. You, yeah you, you're just assuming that all the, the good players are going to be available but if yep. there's one or two out well that's going to make a big difference so especially when you're talking about the likes of uh, yep. Wayne Rudiger who's yep. a national player so yeah well, um, We'll, uh, we'll get uh, we'll get uh, Forbes. who has been intently watching the game just to bring you up to speed. <laughs> they, they've really thrown me on the bu under the bus now. Uh, what I can certainly say is, uh, well, I think it's the Pirates holding the shot. 
Uh, so it looks like Jeff Davis has got the, the one, only only just the one. Uh, Coolsy and Josh obviously have a couple around the mark and uh, Jack Trenorton with one of his own. So a little bit of deliberation as Kane makes his way back and heads onto the mat. So we'll uh, certainly see what they're about to do. And he plays it, in t plays it uh, well, positively at the very least. Running, looking for the jack. Sails through. Well, uh, you know, Kane probably scratching his head a little bit there, Mark. But, uh, well, you couldn't, couldn't have played that m all that much better, really. No, exactly. I think he had a couple of seconds. So just looking for the edge of the blue bowl and uh, just slipped through the gap. Yeah, and just, en just enough. Any, you know, you feel any touch could have possibly uh, improved that for him. But they uh, unfortunately go the two down, which puts the Pirates uh, six in front now, I believe. So, um, look, you know, we, 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 we better release Steve from his uh, bounds here. I know he needs to go over. And, but a quick Give question. Before, talk, well, mate. quick question. We mentioned it earlier. You've got this team of players that have played at the highest level, represented the state. As a coach, yeah. what do you tell them? Well, this look, they've heard it all before, but, I mean, it's probably the, the same basic things they'd hear in the state side and that sort of thing, and just try and get them fired up, you know what I mean, to, to perform at their best. Um, yeah, but I'm sure they've heard most of it before. Um, but, yeah, they're the usual stuff, mate. During the game, who calls the power play? Is it the players or the coach? Oh, we do sort of uh, talk about it and, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a discussion. With, You're allowed yeah. to say you. Yeah. <laughs> you know you want I have to say a little you, bit of influence, mate. But, <laughs> but, no, especially on the first one, it's uh, mainly the players. I've left that up to them to sort of see where the opportune time or where they think the best time to use it is but um, I think most sides from what I can see as far as the last one goes you want to keep that in your back pocket as long as you can just in case it might be needed. All right Steve we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let you go good luck in the uh, the eight o'clock game. Thank you. Cheers best yeah. of luck. <coughs> well we better get back into what we're here to do um, case is getting cold extremely cold so case long long career when did you know it was time to pull up stumps and move on? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, I guess I've got two young kids at home, so uh, I, I guess as soon as they came along, it was, um, you know, the, the end was probably getting closer. And when I get, did get picked for the last uh, World Championships, I, you know, I, I was clearly that was the time. And, um, and I got offered a job with the Commonwealth Games, so it sort of just made sense that um, that would be my last big event. And... Uh, you know, for the next two years after that, I, I worked with the Com Games, which was, um, yeah, one of my one of my highlights of, of all time. So, um, yeah, I couldn't complain of my career. I'm happy with what I've done, and um, you know, I'm lucky enough to, I guess, win a couple of titles, but also lucky enough to, to be in the you know given given the opportunity. So, yep, very grateful. Perfect, Stuart. You seem quite anxious. Yeah, um, I, I guess. Um, what's the the fundamental difference you notice from? Uh, pl playing at that elite level in you know you've been in Commonwealth Games yourself to being on being on the sidelines in the background organising arranging and um, you know not so much the forefront but still heavily involved. Um, how, is there do you still feel that same sort of uh, I, I get I guess pride knowing you know the the job that you've accomplished to set up such a great forum or. Um, yeah. yeah. Would you, Would you rather be out there playing? I guess. <laughs> um. Well, just taking for the the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, for example, it was um, like it was just an amazing experience for me. I, I w was with the organisation for two years, so met some um, some fantastic friends along the way, and um, definitely, you know, at the end of the event, um, was definitely proud of what we were able to put on, and um, but also proud of the Australian guys for what they what they did during the championships as well. So yeah. Um. You know. It was wasn't I didn't have much time to sit back and watch some of the games towards the end, uh, towards the end I did. But um, we so have to break in there. Sorry, Casey, Jack. Thanks for joining us, mate. How are you feeling out there at the moment? Uh, could be bowling better. Okay, uh, I don't think you can actually put your bowl on top of the kitty, mate. From what we've seen, you're going really well, mate. So, um, do you feel you've got the momentum in your favour at the moment? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty pretty even at the moment. Um, 
Yeah. We were we were actually commenting before that, you know, your standout performer in your team, Kane, really needs to lift his game and support you more. <laughs> I can see that on your face, mate. Is that, mm. is that how you feel? Look, he's just left another short one in on you. <laughs> nah. You need to uh, get out and motivate him, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you know, overall, mate, look, you know, good battle between Jeff and yourself. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Anything you're aiming to do to finish it off? Be more consistent. Oh, I think you're doing a good enough job, mate. Look, we'll let you go. Thanks, Alrighty. thanks, buddy. Cheers. Uh, that was uh, Jack Trinorda from the West Lakes Bowling Club. Wow, one of the brightest emerging talents coming from South Australia. And well, I mean, he's holding one shot already uh, in this in this end, but he's been putting on a veritable smorgasbord of good bowls all night long. It's interesting. He feels he's not bowling well. I probably would have uh, would have commented quite the different. But you know, look, I think everyone's got their standard that they want to set for himself, and um, and the just. Josh Thompson says, hey, I'm not being outdone. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, if, if that's, uh, you know, not the best performance from, for Jack, it's scary to think what he what he uh, believes he's capable of in the, on one of those days that, you know, you're happy with your performance. I guess every bowl is their own worst critic. Um, know that from my own personal experience. Uh, but by all means, uh, if he feels he has room to improve, then the what, what, he, what he's currently producing is... Literally uh, just an entree for, for the main course. And of course, uh, Shelby Wennon, a uh, fellow teammate of mine from Edwardstown, high from Bali. Of course, uh, I have uh, been keeping up to date with uh, Shelby's. Actually went uh, quad biking. I get the request of her husband. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she had a good time, but I saw the grin on her uh, husband's face. So, well done, enjoying herself. And a hell of a lot warmer than here. And Jess Alvaro, of course, my... Um, Fellow, uh, fellow commentator from last Sunday, and Jess, it is less windy and twice as cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can concur, having been here uh, on Sunday myself. Um, I don't think the quad biking is the most extreme thing we've happened. Uh, I know for a fact Josh Thompson wasn't playing last weekend. He was at his brother's wedding and then went bungee jumping and hurt his back. Um, doesn't seem to be affecting his bowling as he's just played an absolute hummer. Oh, he get, oh, there we right? go. He's. Hey? I think that's the first bit of showboating of the season. So. Hey, for, for eight shots, Josh, Josh do a <laughs> I mean, if he can improve on that, you'd expect one of those dances out of the, the game Fortnite. <laughs> that was that was a fantastic effort. Hey, look, you know, on a, on a night like this, and it is cooling down, the line changes. We've heard from the players before that they have to adjust their line as the night goes on. So to adjust and put two on like that's actually really good so well done Josh yeah no that was a fantastic effort and well uh, certainly put the back foot on Coolsey who's he's, he hasn't been under a lot of pressure well he's been under a bit of pressure but um, you know not this sort of standard where he you know it's a difficult shot to draw, get his way out of look he is down 18-12 uh, he's on the 14th then there's not a lot of ends to play around with here six shots of difference um, and they are on their power play so the reality is he doesn't want to burn it yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, you know, what as, as good as the, the Pirates have played, naturally scoreboard pressure with the limited ends is going to eventually come into play. Yeah, Pedro, we actually, we, we actually have asked him about it, but look, you know, we will ask again uh, shortly, so you won't miss out. Stay tuned. So, um, Case, look, just quickly, mate, while... Uh, well, this is actually not too... Uh, that's not too shabby. No. Kind of oh. Kane calls with a great shot, <laughs> just flops Physics out. Your enemy, brother. That was... Um, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Case. Um, we have something uh, on our Wednesday show called uh, TJ's Torch. You get the player put in. So I just uh, fire a couple of questions in you, mate. What's the uh, the most memorable player that you've ever played with or against? Uh, it's a good question. There's many, but um, I guess early days, I'd always say uh, Mark Jacobson. Um, it was it was a bit of an idol of mine, and um, growing up as a Victorian, played a lot with with Dougie. Um, but then lately, I guess Alex Marshall and Aaron Sheriff—they're two of the best players that you could ever ever see. And um, yeah, I think they they stand out yep. in, the, in the modern age. Yep. Yep. Biggest grub that you've roomed with? Ooh. Um, oh, mate. To, to be honest, they're all the Aussie guys, and um, they're pretty pretty good blokes. And I, I honestly can't pick <laughs> one out. But <laughs> I can't pick one out of the many. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, if Rudy was in attendance, I feel like that could have been the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Now I think of it. Um. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess one of the things with the UBC is naturally it's a new exciting format. 
for the reg regular player, are there are there avenues that people can get involved, uh, if not by playing, but volunteering to help with you know marking, scoring, umpiring, that kind of thing? Um, are there opportunities for those available, or is Abs that that's yeah. still in the works? Absolutely, it, we need um, you know approximately between 70, 70, 70 to one hundred players in our event, so. Um, we'll launch player registration, so any bowler from around the world, any country, as long as you're a bowling member, um, you can uh, register, and then it's up to the teams then to, to pick their team. So yep. um, it's definitely open for all ages, genders, um, and abilities, I guess. Um, and I think we can showcase some, some good entertainers in the sport that probably don't get a chance to play in um, big events like this. Absolutely. Well, if you're in need of a com commentary team, uh, we're here. yeah, we're, we're right here. And we're, we're a drop-in solution. In I'm, I'm, sure if, I'm sure if the B team aren't available, we can be the Cs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's a fantastic new concept. I'm, I mean, I'll certainly put my registration into to play, whether I'm picks another question. Um, but yeah, I'm certainly excited to see um, not only where it goes from this season one, but into the future. Yeah, that's right. Like we're going to start somewhere, so we're starting at three events. Um, but but our, I guess, long goal is um, we will have events in Asia. Um, that's part of our vision is growing the sport over there, and and also trying to increase, um, I guess, the interest and, and um, develop bowls a little bit more in New Zealand. So um, we will have a, a World Series of events, you know, within the next four or five years. But the first couple of years, we'll focus in on Australia and making sure our, our three events per year are um, you know, up and running and, and as good as possible. Thanks, mate. Hey, just quickly across the boards here, uh, Mally Pirates 49-32 up. Um, yeah, we go into the singles 20-15 to 15 for um, for Mr Warner over uh, Simon Dorr and 22-5 uh, for the Mally Pirates. Uh, so, look, probably hinging at the moment. Um, you know, there's a... The, the triples are the uh, the uh, the decider at yeah, the moment. The, the the Adam Forbes show continues. Uh, yeah, I, I, know, I know his family, but I should start probably start asking for some lessons. I reckon. So <laughs> this que question that's come in, mate. Look, we know that your brother's really talented. Yep. So yeah, it stands to reason that you try hard. Oh, I I, I try incredibly hard. Uh, <laughs> whether the success rates there remains to be seen, but uh, now we I've uh, I've been fortunate to beat him once. And we did play for a carton, so I think that's why. But um, every other time, normally, no matter how good I'm playing, I always go up, go, I always go up and go, "That's the big brother right there," and immediately just get nervous and just get sort of almost an element of fear from him, even well, even at, uh, in our in our late and early twenties and thirties. Well, what was interesting is that earlier tonight, someone was asking um, which Forbes was the good bowler. And he's playing in there, and someone's walked past and said, well, it's DJ straight away. So, um, I don't know, and I think that was one of your mates. Yeah, oh, well, I mean, I mean, you won't get an argument out of me. He's he's played phenomenal. He's played at the top level of state for so many years, three-time state pairs champion. Uh, the resume speaks for itself. Um, there's not, not a great deal more I could say without boosting his ego any, anymore. Uh, so. oh, I think I'll get off your case, mate. You've, uh, you've actually managed to hold yourself uh, with incredible, uh, incredible poise there. So, no, congratulations, Joey. Um, awesome. And, of course, uh, Nick Dunn from Yorkshire, UK. So, um, close close to Scotland. They're yeah. going to love that. It's not close, but, I mean, in the same area of the world. Uh, of course, Yorkshire, not right next there. Probably Midlands. Yeah, uh, West Midlands. I might atlas my, you know, maybe, mental my, en my maybe, mental atlas maybe maybe the, maybe east. Yeah, mental atlas isn't the little greatest. A little bit on the other side yeah. of England, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the other west. I mean, I, t I don't, don't profess to be a, you know, a stenographer of any sort. I'm ma majorly impressed you it was in England, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you right. had me, you had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, I mean, at least I can spell, so that's one oh. thing I've got over a few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So look, the hit really has to really has to do something here. There's a power play, so the Pirates power play, and you'd really think that they oh, look from the angle. They're holding. I'd say they're holding shot, Stuart. Yeah, I, I think with the power play, they're going for the throat now, and well, Coolsy playing weight naturally there. Oh, uh, he's got it. Well, that is cool. He's got them both clean. That's a fantastic shot. That's a cracker. Um, I mean, peeled them both clean. They've yep. got the, at least the next three, I think. So You'd have to be happy with that. Coolsy, Coolsy failing to acknowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I believe he calls his own power players retaliation. Just to, yep. just to say thank you, mother, so for the rabbits. Thank you very much. Here we go. Well, the way that the um, that Jack is actually bold and coming back towards the clubhouse, what wouldn't you? Exactly right. He's he's performed time and time again coming back. Uh, it has been incredibly tricky going away uh, in, in contrast, but um, this seems to be the favoured uh, direction for the Knights so far, and I think they've scored the majority of their points from this angle, so... If this this right now is the ice calls that I know. There's not there's not much of my ever look at this, see? No, yeah, no yeah. emotion. Just, no that, emotion. That's 100% focus right now. He can hear us. <laughs> He's ignoring <laughs> us. <laughs> back, back, when I, back when I used to be a skater, I used to call that juiced when you were so focused that you could just pull off anything that you yeah. uh, envisioned, really. So, yep. uh, yeah, this, this is the cane that a lot of people know and love him for, and yep. if you're on the receiving end of it, it's probably not the most fun experience you'll ever have. Which is the commentary team's copping a little bit at the moment. But he's focused. He's, he's, he's dialed in. Yeah, no. Jack Trenorden falling, you know, maybe two, two foot short with his first. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Uh, Jeff Davis doesn't rock quite capitalise. Probably his way is the way he, he visioned, really. Yep. So, Mark, you're out there. You've played in some big games, big venues. It gets noisy. There's people across um, supporting other players in other games. Um... Do you actually hear that going on? Do you block it out? How do you deal with it? Uh, I guess, you know, it depends on how how big the event is. You always get a little bit of nervous. So, um, you know, you, you do hear the noise, but you try your best to block it out as much as you can um, to a certain extent. But sometimes that, you know, for certain players, it sort of a, it helps, you, uh, helps you focus too. Like you're under the pump a little bit more, so you're probably not as relaxed as um, what you are if you're just having a general roll-up. So... I think a night like this, when there's a lot of people watching, um, you know, I think it's great for the players, and they obviously like playing in front of big crowds and uh, with the music and um, people having a good time. So, a um, bit of an event about to take place in between the games. Uh, dollar a bowl. So yet another donation for the SA Farmers. Everyone uh, trying to get behind it, do their bit. I think that's something I'll be getting involved in for sure. Uh, that's for a bit of fun. You need a six pack lock. I need a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I really need that six pack. Oh, it's just my pizza's already waiting for me. <laughs> I can only assume because I'm not there. There we go. Uh, Maybe something will come up. I know it's playing on the big screen at home. Is that is that painting me odds on favourite? So, so you uh, well, I, mate. I, I don't see anyone else out here that can beat you. I do. He's sitting right beside me. And <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking about you, TJ. <laughs> oh, I ain't got a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, did it, I was actually able to have one roll before the games even started on the on the fa farthest rink uh, where the Rogues and the Comets are playing. And it's actually running a very nice 14, but naturally what you'd expect with your your standard synthetic to widen up with a bit of light and, uh, and cool air about. It was actually playing very, very tight on that side, but having saying that, it's performed differently on this TV rink, as I think we've uh, said a, a few times over, so. We've got uh, Nico, the uh, the future Mayor of Midlinton watching. So, uh, hey Nico, how are you going? I think uh, Nico comes back and joins us next Sunday in the commentary. Yeah, thanks, thanks for tuning in, Nico. I uh, hope, hope the campaign's going well, and uh, that was a fantastic he's just converted shot that, He's just converted that from two to six, believe it or not, because he's on his power play. I mean, he, he jumped on the mat so quickly. He was like he'd already played the shot. That was a fantastic yeah. ball. No pressure. And Josh re rebuttals, yeah. and that's a fantastic ball. But <laughs> this is exactly what we want from the Super League, just... Bowl for bowl, non-stop high, high intensity action, and uh, I think those two bowls are probably the best reflection. Of, um, Don Bennett, any score next door? Um, yeah. I could say we're in Salisbury. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next door being uh, Rogues. Um, look, seventeen twenty-two in favour of. Uh, that is in favour of the Comets, I believe. In the uh, pairs? Yes. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, 
Yeah, and the, uh, the other two scoreboards are being stood in front of, but the overall... 19-15 oh, in, uh, in favour of the Rogues. There we go. And the Rogues are ahead on the far rink. Um, overall score, what is that? The Rogues 56 to... I uh, believe that's Comets 56 to Rogues 53. So there you go. So glasses don't work for me either. So, awesome. So, yeah, we, we've been given the 15-minute warning. The Comets holding on to the slightest of leads. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was able to read a bit of text message between Scott Thalborn and Max Kleinig, a little bit of friendly banter about who's going to roll who. And, well, and, uh, as, it, as it turns out, the game appears to be closer than both have predicted. Well, Josh Thompson, dead draw. Next one, uh, bowls two and three of a shot. Uh, Brad McDougal from Wasley's. I was here earlier telling me it's nice and warm in Wasley's, hopefully uh, in the clubhouse. Of course, that uh, nice new clubhouse that they got. Mm. Um, obviously, misfortune uh, through the bushfires where they lost their clubhouse through that fire and, uh, rebuild. So, uh, shout out to Brad. And uh, the scores are correct in the, in the pairs on there. So... Uh, they don't allow Stuart and I to update the scores. They actually have a sensible production team that does that. Uh, yeah, we don't uh, operate any complicated machinery. I mean, we, we, we did discuss that legal team in round one. That we've, uh, they've, they've magically disappeared. But, um, you know, it's... Uh, Trying to keep the central charges under control, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they're singles rep. But I am amazed. I didn't realise day release went to 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> you can see Millsy over there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, uh, funnily enough, he, I, don't, I don't believe he's playing t tonight. Um, oh, he's playing, trust me, he's playing. He's playing, oh, he he's oh. playing singles. When I, when I saw him in the tracksuit, I just figured he had the night off. So. <laughs> no, no, that was his pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is an absolute must-win end for uh, for the Knights yeah, right the, here. The, yeah, this is the, p the penultimate end, uh, and with Jeff Davis falling uh, well short with his first bowl, this is a prime example, prime tr opportunity, rather, for Jack Chenorland to really uh, make the most of this. And Well, he's played an absolutely great first bowl. That should be... Well, you wouldn't think it's enough to uh, deter Jeff from improving, but uh, it's something to build on. And I don't think he's happy with it. No, it has let it go rather quick, I believe. We're just going to hang out there. That's that's probably been the nature of the green coming this way through the event. Um, mm. Just hanging out there. But look, anything behind is not going to hurt. Yeah, it's sort, sort through a bit. But I mean, when you've got to skip like Josh, anything behind is never going to go to waste. Uh, one good drive can undo a whole end of good work uh, by him. Jack unfortunately sprays his second, but I mean, with a first ball like that, at least he's got something there. Uh, you don't want to be leaving Kane empty-handed, especially on a big end like this. Six down, though. Obviously, you know, Kane will be looking for as many bowls in that head as humanly possible. So, um, you know, probably gives a bit of motivation to Jeff right now. Takes the accelerator off, pressures off Jeff. But at the end of the day, he's, well, he's left. A, he's he's. He's left a, a bit of space there for uh, young Jack to draw into. Well, that's his, he's, let, he's let it go too early, I think. Um, Jack's got all the room in the world. Now, two, I mean, the way the way, the way the Knights are looking, you need a three here. You know, you're looking to at least, at the very least, get a draw. You need a three to build off. He's got a two. And looking at that two, with Kane Cools having three balls to play, you wouldn't imagine you're going to be um, struggling to achieve that. So... It really is a matter of what Josh Thompson can do to uh, slow it down. And remember, uh, you know, Kane Cools has got last bowl. Which, it, which uh, will be a huge thing uh, when all is said and done. Of course, the uh, person you can hear yelling is uh, Dave Carter uh, over on the far rink. Never heard a uh, lead have to yell and get instructions. Yeah, and, and recipient of the first wrong bias in the SA Super League, so uh, perhaps he's just yelling out to what, what sticker to have on the outside again, just, just for memory's sake. <laughs> well, Josh Thompson's uh, really put in a bomb on the first one. Coolsy replies in kind. That's a fantastic effort. That's a great effort. A really, really great ball by Kane Cools there. Um, still needs to move that ball a bit, but to at least get shot back, that's the building block you need. Uh, you don't want to be going out there with... I mean, you don't, you don't want to be chasing shadows, really, with one-ball targets, so... 
Yeah, look, Josh will be looking to do something fairly close with this one because you don't want to leave it with the last bowl of the sand. Yeah, that's, gets that's, inside the whites. That uh, makes it really difficult. Yeah, no, he hasn't. No, nah, he's left it exposed. So, Case, your cane calls. He's going to be lining up after this one, his last bowl. You can see the head. What are we doing? Oh, I think he, if he just touches the jack, he's probably probably three or four. Um, and as you say, he's six down with only a couple ends to go. So he's, uh, he's just a little bit wide, but they've only got one in there. So it gives him a chance of his last bowl. Yeah, so they've got they've got four. Uh, they have four of the, the closest five bowls. So preventing a, a, a Josh Thompson uh, shot bowl here, you'd think he'd be playing pretty positively at that. Because so. Uh, <laughs> Kath Greenside, how much time left? Not very much at all. I reckon there's about five minutes on the clock, to be honest with you. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to be taking too much too much longer. Uh, this is why Steve Grant's not playing. <laughs> Just looking for the coach of the Eastern Raiders. Nowhere near us, uh, thankfully. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, this is this is it. This is where uh, this is where it gets decided. Well, uh, I feel this is probably the most important ball of the game now. Um, He's got the opportunity to really make a big difference here. Let's it go. And oh, well. All's to be unfolded once they reposition the jack, but he's two down. Yeah. That's two two down, so yeah. So unfortunately goes the wrong way for Kane Cools, which puts it just out of reach for the Knights in this game. By default. Um, yeah, by default. Uh, I'll give it Josh a bit oh. of curry. <laughs> I don't want him to win on his own merit. We'll, uh, we'll just give him one last grubbing in the last end. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, does it, uh, aside from the singles, probably a game to to forget for the Knights. They uh, had their opportunities, but just couldn't quite make them count when desperately needed. And uh, the Knights, uh, sorry, the Pirates uh, prevailing in the end here. You know, in, all, in all in all fairness, look, you know, I understand that, but you know, I think all players on this in this game have held account for himself um, yeah. really well. I mean, look, at the end of the day, movement of a jack, you know, Josh has had a pretty pretty good result from a drive to take a four. Um, you know, you look back on it, and um, yeah, you know, comes down dead past a couple of bowls. So I think all four players have, have held themselves in in in, in good accord. Um, you know. We always like to say the score doesn't reflect. I'm sure, Mark, you've been in some games. You go, wow, how'd that happen? But you go back and reflect on your game and you've had a pretty solid game. Yeah, exactly. And you, you win a lot of games when you probably shouldn't have and you lose some that you probably, probably shouldn't. So it's just the way, way our sport is. But I think you're right. All four players have played well. I think the two young, young boys, uh, uh, Jack and Josh, have probably been the standouts. I think uh, young Josh, I know you've been <laughs> given a bit of ribbon, but... Um, <laughs> In the second half, he's been uh, he's been outstanding. Yeah, yeah. That, it's actually interesting, you know, if you look at Jack and Josh, uh, you'd probably think similar age group, wouldn't you? Uh, Josh <laughs> is actually married with a kid. He <laughs> seriously could take a ribbon, mate. I can tell you now. <laughs> I mean, and, well, I, I can say personally from uh, from from Josh's victory last week, he does he he, he and his uh, team performed so well. They deserve the ribbing they're getting tonight, just as a bit of added and, motivation. And, and by the way, the uh, I think the recipient of that ass whooping that he had out last week was actually my lad. So I'm just getting some own back. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've got a so we've got a disgruntled father that we finally come out of confession. Uh, if we had have found that out, maybe uh, 17 ends ago, you would have been uh, precluded from the commentary, perhaps. <laughs> Oh, there's still plenty of time to get punted yet, I can assure you that. <laughs> uh, ben Fidock, isn't there supposed to be a jack? That's uh, Ben Fidock, oh, mate. Oh, sorry, Fidock. Ben Fidock, I'll have you know. Ben Fidock. Feel like you're pulling my leg there, but I'll, I'll roll with the punches. Uh, there is supposed to be a jack, that's just the camera angle you're seeing. Which is now getting corrected. So, uh, teams said you could have yelled that out, I'll just come from there. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to learn... Well, jacks are overrated anyway because people feel compelled to be close to him. I don't think jacks are overrated because he's, he's bowled well tonight and if anything, he's underrated. So it's turned from Josh to TJ. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're leaving him alone. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's had uh, two great wins in a row against great opposition. I think Josh has finally earned our uh, reprieve for, for sledging. And, uh, in, in, in all fairness, um, look, they have actually played really well. Um, both, both of the uh, the young lads. So, 
be an awesome feeling, I guess. You get out there, you're in front of a big crowd, and there's absolutely no physical way of losing this game. I mean, naturally, you've probably been in that uh, yourself. You know, you uh, participant in, the, in you know, many Australian Open international series. Uh, you know, is it, is it kind of like a victory lap when, <laughs> when uh, all is said and done, you still got a couple ends to go, or do you, is it still uh, business until you finally put that last one down? Yeah, I think in the in the big games, um, you know, obviously shots do count at the end of the year. So, um, you know, you never know what could happen over the next few weeks. So, um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Josh will be looking to to get the shot here and um, you know add and get a couple to to have a big win. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that that's the other thing as well. You know, you have a good win. Uh, it's, you know, it's icing on the cake to get off the final end, having won that as well, and really just assert. Uh, maybe not so much dominance, but just the fact that you were victorious in that game. Mark, I interestingly enough, people say about winning good, representing the country, your state or whatever else, there's an enormous amount of tension, attention on you as a bowler on the map, the eyes on you. People particularly starting to look at, I guess, your mannerisms, the words you say. Is that something that you coach through from the Australian um, support team? Yeah, definitely. Uh uh, Steve Glasson and, and his coaches uh, are very conscious on, on body language. So, um, and I think the, you, when you watch the Australian team, they, they walk around as if um, as if they deserve to be there, and, and they are the best that we've got. So, um, and, and the other nations sort of if, when they're doing that, I think that they fear that it's to some extent. So, mm. um, body language is very important in our sport. That's for sure. Yeah, it's a, a huge one percenter. If, if, you know, reg- whether it's a good bowl or a bad bowl, they sort of feel like any impact they do isn't doesn't reflect on you in any way. And exactly, yeah. No, it's, I mean I've tried it myself. By no means a master, but yeah, it's uh, so, definitely. Oh, sorry, go on, mate. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, it's one one of those things. It takes a fa- takes a fair bit of time, I feel, to sort of train yourself into that, because I. And, and if you're having a particularly bad day, you know, you can have an unlucky day where you you can walk off feeling that you've done your job, just haven't got the results. But on a on a truly trying day, I think that's when the results uh, shine through. Uh, and TJ, as you were saying, well, TJ's been distracted. Um, now we're going into the last bowl. Uh, well, I think that, you know, just quickly going to it, Kane hasn't given up. Shots matter. Mm. Uh, you know, he's looked across the boards, he knows it's... Uh, but you know what? That's professionalism, that's the maturity of someone out there that really wants to be out there. So, you know, don't give up the last bowl, even in the face that, you know, I can't make the score difference. Um, Kane's demonstrated, I guess, the value that we want from our bowlers out there. So, you know, as I said, well done to all four bowlers. Um, uh, but, you know, shout out to the uh, Mallee Pirates, in this case, of Jeff Davis and uh, Josh Thompson. Yeah, and uh, and the Pirates overall proving to be uh, to be too strong in the end. But um, yeah, as you said, mar- margins can come into this, and you uh, you know if, if you're down, you reduce. If you're up, you try and extend uh, as much as humanly possible. But um, I think you know to to Jeff and Josh, a fantastic effort, and uh, comm- commiserations to to Jack and Kane. I think they put in equally admirable a- t- attempts. Absolutely, look at the last bowl from uh, from Todd over there for the uh, for the Knights in the uh, in the triples, which will wrap this uh, this game up. And a look a reasonably convincing win to the pie. I like saying that with the quality of players around, because you don't want to be, I guess, right, running anyone down. But well done. Um, and over there, short, how'd they go over uh, on the far end? Uh, on the far far end from the triples, the Pirates finished 32 to five, which I think might be a new record for the SA uh, for the SA Super League. And in the other game completely, uh, we have the Comets emerging victorious 64 to 54. Unfortunately, some of the rink scores are obscured, so we'll refrain from that in fear of uh, getting them wrong. But uh, it's the Comets and the Pirates that are winners in this game. And uh, I'll, I'll pass back to TJ. So just um, just quickly, there is going to be a little bit of a one bowl roll off in support of uh, other farmers. Um, so Mark, look, you've uh, you've we're just we're going to continue to stream here while we go through this. But Mark, you've watched your your first game of the the Super League, man. Your thoughts? Uh, I think uh, I've been tuning in most weeks on on a live streaming, um, but just being here, I think it's just a fantastic idea. Um, and I'm pretty sure I made a comment before. I can the next twelve.
It's uh, it's definitely the way to go, and um, yeah, well done to to Bold South Australia for for this great concept. Yep. Mark, you were saying earlier that you know with uh, with the coaching and the people, to, the the body language and the way that you carry yourself is like you know you, you're proud of that you've earned the right to be there. But in actual fact, you know, if you wanted to go from a comical sense, you could near get 30 names from Australian bowlers or around the states that could actually walk in and represent himself reasonably, uh, really well at a high level in Australian colours. I'm going to go put my dollar in for a farmer. Well, we've got a special... We, make sure you go and ring one, please, Stuart, so we can all see it at home. So, you know... You're exactly right. Um, you know, and we're lucky enough in Australia, you, you say 30, we might even have 50. There's that many players that, um, unfortunately, just don't have the opportunity um, because, you know, our top 10 or 20 players are so good, so... Um, and hopefully through, you know, events like this and, you know, the BPL and, and our event, uh, UBC, um, you know, we can showcase some more talent and you never know. Um, we've got so many young kids coming through the ranks and hopefully we can see them in Australian colours in the next three or four years. So theorise with me here just quickly. We've got an up-and-coming junior comes through and starts winning everything. Um, you've got Aaron Wilson, gold medalist, absolutely fantastic yeah, bowler. How do you got when Aaron Wilson said, I, look, I know that you're the current champion of this, you've won a gold medal, but you know what, we just can't fit you in the team. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit tough, but um, you know, just on Aaron, Aaron Wilson, he's a, an outstanding player, and um, it was only two years ago he wasn't even in the Australian team, yet now he's a world champion, yeah. current world champion, a current Commonwealth Games gold medalist. So I guess that's the... I guess a good example for our sport that if you are given the opportunity at the right time, um, you can be successful really quickly. And um, you know, Aaron's taken full advantage of that. And yeah, good luck to him. Of course, um, the uh, the warm ups happening and uh, just uh, hang on, a, hang on, just hang on. seriously. DJ. So, uh, DJ looks like so, so Stuart Forbes is showing exactly why he's so talented to be a commentator. <laughs> of course, I've never bowled a wrong bowl sitting in this seat, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you never do, do you? <laughs> never do. So uh, you can hear uh, Matt uh, Matt Northcott uh, in the background and still obviously taking donations for the um, Saver Farmer. Good work, Helen. Good work. Rick 2. There's no one played on Rick 2 yet. How'd the Young Hill boys go? Yago? Come second. They might share with you. Because the, uh, right, not about minute, rink, rink two, minute, but I can assure you that the people on rink two are actually the uh, the players warming up for the eight o'clock start off game. You've got uh, Tony Trelaw there and uh, Tony Lucas. Of course, Tony Trelaw playing the singles. Tony Lucas, we established, is leading in the pairs with Mitch Percy uh, skipping the pairs. Um, because uh, Jeff Munn of the uh, Blazers, who's seen a, uh, uh, some pretty good success, I think he's uh, two from three in the singles. As I keep on saying, because I know he probably listens to this later, he's uh, the uh, picked up late in the draft right. and has played That's every nice. singles game. The the, uh, the prestige prestige discipline for the, uh, the side, and he's a non-marquee player, so it goes to show that uh, he's obviously caught right. the coach's he's, eye he's or paid the coach. Christopher. All right, one last one, Sean. We're all on you tonight, mate. All on you. <laughs> Just uh, Chris Flavel warming up for the, skipping the trips for the Eastern Raiders. Ellen. You can go see Erin. She'll sort you out. Did we get anyone on rink two? Uh, it's past all two. Uh, who came second on uh, rink one? All right, Henry goes so, uh, I really, out. really don't know what Stuart Forbes is doing. He's on so two different rinks at the same time here, so... Yeah, so as you can as you can hear, and, uh, I think we need to get him back over here rather quickly. <laughs> you'll be kind enough to donate one, will you? No, you'll give one. Most um, so just just quick. Mark, most memorable one. moment that you can recall, as you said earlier, is plenty of people, plenty of experiences. But is there one that really stands out in your second. mind? Uh, yeah, I, I guess you're it's always going to be the Melbourne Commonwealth Games for me, and 2006. Um, 
I was only 24 and lucky enough to, to win the gold and the triples. Um, and to be honest, it probably wasn't expected. Um, so I think that was, uh, being a Melbourne boy, that was obviously very special. Um, and then uh, 2000, in, in Adelaide actually, 2012 World Championships winning the fours, um, which was... Uh, which is fantastic. So I think yep. those two stick out for me for sure. And it, um, you know, look as you said, uh, you know, a lot of experiences, whatever else. What ta if you if you were sitting there to a young lad that comes up and says, "Look, I'm thinking of taking up lawn bowls. What is it about lawn bowls that connects you to it? What would your answer be?" Uh, I think I think it's just the the social side of the thing, the, the, the sport initially. But um, the, these days, you know, the the potential and the opportunity that young um, boys and girls get through the sport, you know, you can get a good jobs out of these, and uh, it's it's just not just a sport these days. It's a, it can be a business as well. So, um, but I think if they if they learn and keep teaching, get, getting taught off the right people, um, and and keep training. There's uh, there's great things to be done there, there for, for young so young guys. Yeah, great response, thanks, Mark. We'll be right back. Uh, look, hey, uh, give us five minutes. We'll be back. We'll